feed grind hardened steel using water-based coolants. We grind for a few hours, everything's fine, and then whammo, we get really bad burn. And it won't go away until we dress the wheel again. Why does this burn come all at once, and what's going on? This is something called burnout, and you tend to see it quite a bit, or more frequently. Uh, in creep feed grinding, you see it more frequently when using water-based coolants. And here's what's going on. Let's say I'm doing creep feed grinding, and let's say I'm taking a deep depth of cut and just grinding along. Okay. So I'm taking my deep depth of cut, grinding along, and what's happening is temperatures are getting high, water-based coolants tend to evaporate, depending on what you have in them, 120, 140 degrees C, just above the boiling temperature. So we start to grind, and the coolant does evaporate, but it evaporates little bubbles at a time and it's called nucleate boiling. So not bad, it actually sucks out some heat because it takes some heat to evaporate that coolant. But then what happens is the uh, coolant is not enough to take away enough heat and instead of getting little bubbles popping out one at a time of boiling coolant, we get a layer of boiling coolant. Big layer here and that layer of boiling coolant, now steam is not a very good conductor of heat. Water sucks away heat pretty well. Steam has a low thermal conductivity, doesn't suck it away very well. So all of a sudden, we've lost all the cooling benefit because now we've got that layer of steam there. Steam's not taking any away any heat. All of a sudden, temperatures get high, we get burned of the part, and then we start getting material adhering to the wheel and just everything goes bad got to go back and dress the wheel. Okay. Now what do you do to deal with this? Well basically we've got to produce less heat and we got to get that heat out of there. So we want to produce less heat, we dress the wheel sharp, dress it more frequently if we have to. We grind more aggressively so that we're, not, we're doing less rubbing and more cutting so that less heat is being generated just because we're grinding more aggressively, a bigger aggressiveness, a biggest, bigger chip thickness. Uh, and then what we do is we improve our cooling so that we get more coolant within the pores of the wheel. We do this by having a coolant speed that matches the wheel speed. We do it by aiming our nozzle well. We, doing it, we do it by getting better nozzles. And if we have to, we do it by getting a more porous wheel. So here's an example of a company I was at that was getting burnout. Measured power with the grindometer. They were taking several passes. Everything's looking good. Everything's looking good. And then you see it around 220 seconds, everything goes bad, and power shoots up and almost doubles. Why does that happen? Because we lose the cooling effect, we load up our wheel, wheel's all loaded, dull, beat up, everything's bad, and we're just burning our parts. Solution for these guys was to basically get temperatures down, better dressing, better coolant delivery, and you can argue maybe having a lower coolant temperature will also help your cause too. So here's a summary of things you can do to keep your burnout at bay. Get your coolant speed to match your wheel speed, get it aimed better, get more coolant in the pores of the wheel, dress your wheel sharp, grind aggressively, increase your feed rate if you have to to get better self-sharpening your grits, slow down your wheel if you have to. Some other options, a more por porous wheel, eh, that's a six to eight week delivery time, but that is one option. Another option is to reduce the temperature of your coolant, get a chiller so that you've got more room to play with before he starts to evaporate. But these are all things that will help you keep burnout at bay.